Part five, section two, chapter four of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter four, revival at the beginning of the century. The revival of seventeen ninety seven to eighteen o three had several important centres of operation. The movement began almost simultaneously in widely separated regions and continued until the intervening spaces were covered by its effects in connecticut the spiritual outpouring was very remarkable and from there it extended throughout new england from seventeen ninety six to eighteen o three not less than one hundred and fifty churches in new england were powerfully quickened and large numbers were added in kentucky and tennessee there was the same great spiritual demonstration here was a strong population of the scotch-irish element but these people were surrounded by many who made no profession of religion by others who were outspoken sceptics and others who were given up to gross immorality craighead greddy hodge burke and the mcgees were leaders in the movement people assembled on weekdays for worship in the open air this in fact was the beginning of camp meetings which have been such a prominent feature in the religious life of the united states the first was held in june eighteen hundred by the presbyterians and methodists in concert all denominations united in the work and multitudes were awakened and converted the same physical phenomena attended this mighty work as marked the awakening of the past century from this revival the western church received an impulse which has continued down to the present time the moral results were most salutary from profligacy and religious indifference the people became sober and devout and a most salutary improvement was observed in the whole social condition of the people in the revival districts the colleges shared largely in this revival yale had only about a dozen students who professed religion but there was such a powerful awakening that seventy-five students became christians and united with the church in dartmouth and williams colleges there were similar awakenings and large accessions of students to the churches many of the young men who were converted afterwards entered the ministry of the seventy-five in yale college who joined the church about one-half became ministers the reclaiming of the colleges from infidelity to christianity had an immense significance never since has religion been at so low an ebb in these centres of intellectual life and from these college revivals have come some of the most earnest and successful christian workers the church has ever known a great impulse towards evangelization was imparted by this revival the western population had been reached as never before and the kentucky and tennessee region was made the starting point for missionary work farther west about this time the entire american church saw its great opportunity on the frontier young men from the eastern colleges were enthusiastic in their desire to travel into all parts of the west found churches and schools and distribute the bible and religious books there was a new faith in evangelism the old prejudice against whitefield and his methods had in large measure long since passed away and there was a new and general belief in the reality and power of the work of god's spirit in the human soul other advantages to the church grew out of that wonderful work of grace the back of infidelity was broken the old french deism largely disappeared the quickening of the membership of the church had a powerful influence for good the remnants of the halfway covenant were swept away besides large accessions in membership and a great increase in ministerial candidates an impulse was given to literary activity which it has never lost books and periodicals were circulated far and wide missions among the neglected at home the indians and negroes were revived and organized anew 
the founding of sunday schools bible and tract organizations and other benevolent institutions sprang out of the warm inspiration of this great spiritual ingathering the american bible society founded in eighteen sixteen was the product of this movement as was also the massachusetts society for promoting christian knowledge eighteen o three the new york religious tract society eighteen twelve and the new england tract society eighteen fourteen which in eighteen twenty three changed its name to the american tract society and in eighteen twenty five became practically merged in that great organization of the same name which has had such an honorable part in sowing the land with the leaves of light and healing End of chapter four